Hello and welcome to O'Neill Artworks, Latebox SVG, and now StainedGlassFiles.com. And today I'm going to show you how I made this really cute stained glass 3D card. I'm going to show you my template, which makes it easy, and how to use it. To get started, let's take a look at what you're going to need. First, you'll need one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. I generally use between 60 and 100 pound cardstock. This is for the envelope that you're going to cut. Second, you'll need two 8.5 by 11 pieces of cardstock. I usually, again, use between 80 and 110. And this is for the card itself. So you want to use a color that is easy to write on and also will offset and really uh, showcase the graphic that you're going to choose. Then I use an 8.5 by 11 printable white vinyl sticker that makes it easier to attach to the cardstock. I don't have to print it on photo paper, then glue it later. And finally, the magic is in the, the one 8.5 by 11 holographic transparent sticker paper. Let's start in Cricut Design Space. And of course, we're going to choose New Project in the upper right-hand corner. And then select the file that you've downloaded, the template file. And we do that by choosing Upload and then Navigating to the file. But I've already got mine loaded here, so I don't need to upload the image. I'm just going to choose Upload. And then I'm going to choose Add to Canvas. I've created this template to make it as easy as possible to create these amazing cards. So let me unpack exactly what you're looking at. The green or teal is the envelope and the light blue are the actual card cutouts. The gray is just going to be used to measure your graphics. So let's ungroup everything and then let's hide the pieces we're not going to use right away. And that's going to be the envelope and anything that's light blue. And all I'm doing is clicking on the little eye in the right hand side on everything that is not gray. Great. Now let's go add our picture. And today I'm going to do a snowman. There are so many graphics to choose from in my winter pack. I, I just don't know which one I want to use, but I know I want to do a snowman. So let me just pick one of the snowmen. Because there's so many colors, I always select complex and then I just need to add to canvas. Remember, you're going to choose print then cut because we want to print then cut. And then we just select it and choose add to canvas and ta-da, it's there. Now again, I just want to tell you that we're gonna be using our gray squares as templates. So let's copy and paste this graphic three times. And when I say we're gonna be using it as templates, we're going to be using that to make sure that we measure them to be the size that we want them to be. So the first biggest picture is going to be 4.65 and right now it's 7.11. So I'm just going to go up to the size and I'm going to change it to 4.65. And you can see it's the same size as the gray square. Now I don't need that gray square anymore. I'm just going to delete it off my canvas. Really, literally do not need it anymore. And now that I know what size I'm starting with, I'm going to change each one of these copies to 4.65. Sure, if I had thought about it, I could have done that first and then copied them three times. It is what it is. So now I'm going to place the next square on top of my second graphic. I'm going to align center and then I'm going to use the slice tool in the lower right hand corner and watch what happens. I sliced the center and it's exactly center. Let me slow that down while I do it for the next one. Remember, I need to start with the same size, which is 4.65. Then I'm going to arrange the gray square to go on top. It doesn't have to go on top, but it just is easier to visualize for me when it's on top. Then I'm gonna select them all I'm going to choose align center 
and then I'm going to choose slice in the lower right hand corner. And then what I get is the center exactly sliced. So when I place these three graphics together, they'll sit on top of each other, exactly centered to each other. Now on the right hand side, I can reveal my blue. And let's show, uh, let me just show you what it's gonna look like when I actually cut it because I'm going to put the graphics uh, in the different positions that they're going to be. I know, it's so pretty, so pretty. And I think that this blue would be a really nice color for the cardstock too. <laughs> I, I'm just seeing that now, but I, I've decided I'm gonna be using white, but I might do this again. Look how cute and pretty that is gonna look when that gets cut, right? Um, missing a blue base. Let me just go see where that is. There it is, put that behind. And voila, so gorgeous. Okay, so we know it's gonna look great. We are really happy with that, I think. And let's get cutting. Okay, let's unhide everything else that we need and that's gonna be the card itself, which is five by 10, because when we fold it in half, it's going to be a five by five card. And then the envelope. And the envelope is the only thing that we need to cut on a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. Once you've got everything on your design space canvas, let's choose make it. And this is the first thing that we're gonna do. And that is the print then cut portion. And like I said, I print on vinyl sticker paper because I get a nice quality graphic plus it's already sticky. So it's easier to just stick it onto the card. And then you can see the teal or seafoam or whatever color that is, is on 12 by 12. Now I'm not cutting the card on 12 by 12. I'm cutting it on eight and a half by 11. And because it's a different color, it's very easy to resize just those pieces. So I've changed them to eight and a half by 11. I've left the envelope at 12 by 12 and by default, my print and cut is eight and a half by 11. I'm ready to go. Now, before I just show you the results of my print and cut and the rest of the, the building it, let me just show you my tip on print and cut. What I do is I always turn on use system dialog box. And that's because my printer defaults to a regular print job because other people in my home use my printer. So I wanna make sure that I've selected a photo quality uh, a paper so that it will allow me to select then a photo quality um, result. So by default, it's like a standard result and I want it to be high quality. So I usually choose a photo luster because I'm using a matte sticker if I was using a glossy sticker, I would use glossy. And then I just change the quality to a uh, high quality. Uh, choose okay, make sure it pulls from the rear cause that's where I put the sticker paper in in the rear, but uh, that's the paper source. And then just let it go. After you've printed your graphic, you want to make sure you put your transparent holographic sticker on the graphic before you cut and here's how you take your gorgeous holographic transparent sticker and your graphic sticker and just line them up uh, i use a towel because i found that that's the easiest way not to get as many air pockets as i generally get i mean a lot of people do it a lot of different ways but essentially i found it's quick it's easy and if I do get any air pockets, they're very easy to just sort of push out, if that makes any sense. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to release the top of the holographic transparency, and I'm gonna gently line it up with the top as best as I can, I kinda eyeball it, line it up with the top of my other sticker, and I don't push anything down till I'm pretty sure I don't have many or any air pockets. And then I'm pulling it out. And the reason I do this now is because when I 
put the sticker on to be cut on my Cricut, I want it to cut through both the transparent holographic and the vinyl sticker that I've printed the graphic on. And you'll see the result, it is so cute. I see a little air pocket, it's not a problem. I'm just going to, well, you'll see the end result. You don't see that air pocket at all because it just sort of um, goes away. It's not a big one, I'm just gonna push it down, but look how gorgeous this is, I can't take it. Great, now we've got everything cut. Let's just put it together real quick. I Here are my cards that are going to create that 3D effect. Here is my envelope and spoiler alert, I decided to cut a different envelope that I liked a little bit better. And here are my stickers because that's essentially what these are. Now I've created these holographic stickers and the beauty of having holographic stickers is I don't need to glue, I don't need to uh, make sure that the glue is dry. These are already sticky so I'm going to place them I'm gonna eyeball it, but I'm gonna place them in the center of each card that is just slightly bigger than the sticker itself. And I have three cards and I have three stickers. Okay. There's my graphics, they look great. Now I have the card card itself. And this is essentially just a five by 10 piece of cardstock. And all I'm gonna do is just simply fold it in half. Some people may have scored this. <laughs> I chose not to score this. I just fold it in half and just take a tool or something on a, with a flat edge and just really make that a nice crisp fold. And now I'm going to need my crafters double-sided tape. And I'm just going to take my very first largest piece and I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of adhesive on it. And I'm going to attach that to my card. I'm just going to line it up and make sure that it is nice and lined up and all the edges match because it's essentially the same exact size as my card. It's five by five. So that in and of itself is kind of a cute card, but we're not done yet. We're going to make it 3D. Today I'm using double-sided adhesive squares. Sometimes I use strips, dots, whatever I have really uh, I'll use. And so I'm taking the next size of my um, snowman and I'm putting the double-sided adhesive squares in each corner. Not right on the corner because I want there to be some air, right? I want it to look 3D. So I'm just sort of going a little bit inside the corner. And now I'm going to align this into the center of the card. I'm not trying to line it up with anything, any graphic on the card. I am aligning it center in the card. So it's centered to the card. It's not aligned to any part of the picture. It will align itself. You just need to put it in the center. Now let's do that with the last piece and I'm putting these a little bit further in, not quite as close to the edge, but uh, oh, it's gonna be so cute. Remember, remember, you're not aligning the graphics to anything in the graphic. You are simply putting it in the center of the card. Okay, let's take care of the last step and that is going to be the envelope. This is probably the easiest envelope you've ever made. It simply folds and then you're gonna fold it on each perf, each edge. And then let's just, just gonna show you this real quick. And then you drop your card in, fold it shut and seal it with a sticker. 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoy the template that I created. I hope you enjoy all of the stained glass files that I've made available. They are so much fun to do and the result is just so satisfying. Please like, share, respond. Hey, tell me how I'm doing. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you'd like to see more of. Tell me how I can help you.